Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of Gator Life. Once again, I'm Coleman Monahan. And I'm Nick Lucarini. We are very excited for today. Yes, we are. It's the second episode. We're still here, and we are pumped to give you guys some more content. We have an exclusive segment on the fifth grade STEM project, a look on Sneak Up on Hunger, and a review of Anchovy's fall sports season featuring interviews with athletes and coverage of the varsity soccer championship game. Spoiler alert, we lost. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. My name is Nicholas Fenziali, and this is my friend Jimmy Baker. We will be your sports host this year. We will be recapping all of our sports teams and interviewing players. We even have direct footage from our championship soccer game for our varsity soccer team. Now we're with a member of our field hockey team, Lauren Dehowski. Lauren, how was the season this year? The field hockey season went really well. All the girls came together and really bonded as a team. In the beginning of the season, our first game, we tied with Notre Dame, and then at the end of the season, we won against them to make it into the semifinals. Wow, seems like a good year. So Brock, how was the football season this year? The football season went very well this year. We had a four and three record. Even though it doesn't sound well, it was still an overall great performance from the team. Nice, back to some coverage on the soccer team. So we are going to the Water Towers in Chestnut Hill for the Catholic Academy League Championship for soccer. Um, it's 8th and 7th grade, and we're really excited. Hi, my name is Kenzie, and I play striker. Hi, my name's Connor, and I play defense. Hi, my name's Emma. I play midfield and striker. My name's Javier Granda, and I'm a striker. All right, I'm Mike Holt. I play striker. My name's Alan, and I play striker. Hi, my name is Amy McCafferty, and I play right defense. My name is Christine Svita, and I'm the Angela Assumpta Academy manager of the Angela Assumpta Academy soccer team. This season has had a lot of ups and downs. Uh, we've lost our fair share of games, but we are, I think, peaking at the exact right time. Our team is finally all here and all healthy, so we're really excited. We've lost a lot of people to injuries over the, over the course of the season, so the fact that everyone's here for their final game at Anchile is a really important thing for me. All right, so we're here at the Water Tower Rec. Um, about to start the game, warming up. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, we're playing against Norwood. It's the championship game, so it's a pretty big deal. Although we lost, it was pretty fun. You know, it was a close match. We all played well. Congrats to our soccer team for a great season. And now to Miss Whalen's fifth grade class, who's putting a new spin on emojis. What's your favorite emoji? The guy who is whose head is exploding. Pig emoji. Violin emoji. Cow. Thumbs up emoji. Hello, I am Nate, and I'm into here to interview Miss Whalen's class about the STEM project they did this year about the emojis. What was your job on this project? Well, my job was to create a doctor with facial deformity. Um, I was on the design team, so I had to make ideas for what emojis we were going to make. And I had to work with a person from the construction team to make it all possible to create it. And what emoji did you make? We made a political figure in a wheelchair. So we made it a president because 
they never really think about people who have everyday disabilities and we want to show that so we thought a good thing would be a political figure like a president because um they have one of the most important jobs and what emoji do you make um i made an i made an athlete with hearing aids and what inspired you to make that emoji well, because there's n there was not an emoji for athletes with some sort of like hearing loss. So what encouraged you to make this project for your students? Sure. Well, it's actually a funny story. I was, um, one of my crutches had broken and I wanted to text a friend of mine to let her know <laughs> that my crutch had broken. Um, and I really, whenever I text, I like to uh, use emojis. Um, but I could not find any emoji that would accurately display my crutch being broken. So it really got me thinking like, oh, well, are there emojis for people with disabilities? So I, that kind of uh, brought me down a rabbit hole of looking through all the emojis and seeing if there was any. And I found out that there wasn't. What was your thought process of coming up with this project? So my thought process was, um, so after I you know, was looking through the emojis and I found out that there were no emojis for people with disabilities. Um, my thought process was that if we were able to do this as a class, then um, we could really build on our empathy, which is something that um, I really value as an educator. Um, so I thought that in doing this, we would be able to do that where empathy is, you know, where you're putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And although, um, you know, my students, um, many of them can't relate to having a physical disability. Um, through this project, I was hoping that they would be able to um, empathize with those having a physical disability. And what I've discovered through the short time we've been working on this project is that's exactly what they're doing. So um, I am really thrilled about that. Hey Coleman, how was your Thanksgiving? It was great. A big part of Thanksgiving is about food. But do you know hunger in Philadelphia has risen up to 22%? And we're trying to help that with our sneak up on hunger. So we're sorting out food to give for like Thanksgiving. Um, mainly people are just bringing in like corn and stuffing and mashed potatoes and things like that just for like a Thanksgiving dinner. Many of us have donated sneak up on hunger over the years but not as many of us know where our donations go. It turns out they go to two places, and one of these places does Divine Mercy Parish. Last month, we had a chance to talk over the phone with Sister Barbara Foy, who helps run the Divine Mercy Parish Food Pantry. We talked to her about running it and how Anshai helps contribute. What inspired you to start this, and how did it all get started originally? Uh, well, Father Oliveri, who you know because he he uh, says mass, celebrates mass with you there. Well, Father Oliveri was the pastor here at Divine Mercy. He knew that he wanted to do something in the neighborhood to help the neighbors. So anyway, he invited four Holy Child Sisters to lunch one day and uh, talked us into the food, pan the food pantry, starting a food pantry. So we've been doing it for eight years. And um, we distribute food once a week, and we rely on donations from Anchile. And we actually did have a chance to talk to Father Oliveri about this and hear his perspective on how he was involved. Well, I saw that there were more and more people who were hungry, more and more people who were needy, and uh, I just thought that it was definitely something we should do because... Jesus told us that we should take care especially of those who are most in need, those who are most poor. So I thought it definitely was something that we didn't have an option to do. We had to do it because we were responding to the call of Jesus. Once again, that was Father Oliveri telling us how he was involved in the creation of the Divine Mercy Parish Food Pantry. So you said it was a small operation. Do you know how, about how many people it helps on, on average? Every week, yeah. we give food to about between 90 and 100 people. In a month's time, we're giving food to 1,200 to 1,300 people. And Philadelphia, as you know, is the poorest major city in the country. Um, hunger, the percentage of people who are hungry in our city, 
is higher than the national norm. So in our little corner of southwest Philly, we do what we can. Um, you're helping us to do that by helping us by giving us food. How did that all get started? How did Anshalay begin uh, working with the food pantry and donating food? To well, when Mike pantry? Oliveri was the, is the pastor and he started, he was, he, he was going to Anshalay for the monthly mass. But he said, I'm going to talk to so-and-so, and, -so, and um, if they have a drive, I'll ask them if the food pantry can get some food. So that's how it started. For the students who are listening to this and who donate, what are the best types of food to donate? The best types of food, obviously, are canned goods. Uh, and the soups, uh, beef stew, chili in cans. Um, any vegetable, canned fruit. Oh, they like mac and cheese. They're, that's not in a can, but mac and cheese. Yeah, so I'd say mac and cheese also. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for your time. We really appreciate it, and uh, hopefully. Oh well, we'll thank see. you, thank you, and thank you for making a difference because you really do make a difference. Thank you for watching this episode of Gator Life. Tune in next time for our special holiday episode. Singing. <laughs> <laughs>